All right, so let's talk about some wine. What I always like to start off when talking about wine is how to deal with a bottle presentation. And we're gonna treat it as if Kevin, our friendly brewmaster, has just ordered a bottle of California Chardonnay. Getting so, more wine, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it, we're doing it. So, there's really a lot of professional steps that you can go through, or you should go through in a, in a sense, when you're doing bottle service, but for our purposes, we can really abbreviate a lot of it and we can make it a much more kind of easygoing and enjoyable, approachable kind of experience. I know the first 50 or 60 times that I presented a bottle of wine, I was extremely nervous, table side, sweating bullets, messing up and fumbling over a lot of the steps. So it just takes some time, but we'll go over some easy ways of how to go about it. So Kevin, you ordered Bogle Vineyards Chardonnay. A couple things we wanna say as we present this bottle. First thing we're gonna make sure we do is show you the label and we're going to do our best to keep it facing you for the majority of the time. We want to say where it's from, in this case it's coming out of California. It's really important to say where it's from, climates, soil types, things like that play a really big role in the different flavors of wine. The producer, Bogle Vineyards, so that's the second point we want to make. We want to say what year it is, and this one could be. Because you presented the label so appropriately, it's a 2014. Yeah, 2014. <laughs> Climate change year over year, different amounts of rainfall happen, things like that. So the year that the wine is coming from can be better than a year before or worse than the year after. So it's an important note to make. Most people don't care and most people <laughs> don't know, but it is part of, the, part of the service you want to go through. So we've got the producer, location, region, and with most American wines you want to say what grape it is. And that's right on the label for us here and it's telling us we've got some Chardonnay. So. Keeping the label facing Kevin, take your wine key, pull it around. You don't want to turn the bottle, you want to turn the key. Come around to the other side. So do you go on the bottom lip or this top lip? Because I've seen both happen. I've seen both happen too. It doesn't matter, but I would recommend you go on the bottom lip because it's going to help you a little bit, in my opinion, with dripping coming down. Keeps you know, it away from the Keeps cork. the yeah. foil away from the top too, but really, you know, you, whatever you feel more comfortable with. You take the foil that you cut off the top, you don't put it on the table, you throw it away or you put it in your pocket one way or another. Keeping the label facing, you can grab the bottle, totally fine. It's a little tricky to get that corkscrew in, right, the first time, but just get one little half a turn in there and then you can move your hand around once it gets set. Again, you're not turning the bottle, turning the corkscrew, you wanna go all the way down to the last turn. Hopefully you have a double inch corkscrew. <laughs> it's much easier to work with than one without. Pull it up and you go back. The last part right here, you don't want to make any noise when you pull the cork out of the bottle. You don't want to hear that pop. You see it in the movies all the time, but you don't want to do it. Had a little pop there. That sounded good. It was good. It's kind of smooth. It's a little baby fart. You know, baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. Traditionally, you're gonna place this cork right in front of Kevin and he's going to pretend he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and, uh, Am I doing a good job? You're doing fantastic. It smells lovely. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're checking the wine for flaws. Really, a lot of times in service these days, you don't have to put the cork on the table. It is a bit of a dated part of the experience. Corked wines isn't the same kind of prevalent thing that it was a long time ago. Either way, you're gonna put it there and leave it or you're gonna take it and you're gonna put it in your pocket. And the whole point really of the bottle presentation is for Kevin to have a taste, you pour about one ounce into the glass, turn it, turn the bottle, you know, as you're pouring, helps reduce the drip. And Kevin's gonna take it in continuing the impression that he knows what he's doing. He's going to give it a little bit of a swirl and he's gonna taste it. And what Kevin's really looking for is to tell whether or not the wine is corked. And there's some classic flaws that'll show up in the nose and let us know if it's corked, so to speak. And really the general impression is does it have like a funky or a vinegary kind of note to it. Most people uh, aren't comfortable with this part of the service, most guests so to speak, and they just kind of fumble around a little bit. And you just got to patiently sit there and let them go through the motions and they'll be like, yeah, you know, it's good, then pour it out. And that'll do. That'll yeah, do. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so, well, I don't want to be the only guy tasting this yeah. thing. So, so uh, once you do yeah. taste though, I will gladly pour around for our friends oh, at the oh, table. Oh, well, yeah, sure. This is me pretending like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Very good at it. Talented. I'll have that. Yeah, so <laughs> you want to go around counterclockwise, <laughs> clockwise, excuse me, to the table. No ladies here, so we don't have to worry about serving them first. 
Now, uh, there's a being a brewer. There's a certain way to evaluate uh, beer. Yeah. Let's uh, how how. So the way to evaluate wine and the way to evaluate beer is really there's a whole lot of parallels, and in my opinion, it's almost fundamentally the exact same process. You want to give the wine the swirl. The glass captures the aromas. And when you go to smell, you're going to look for certain things. And when you go to taste, you're going to kind of look to confirm the things that you smelled. There's a lot more to the whole process of tasting wine that we don't need to go through, like things you can tell from how the wine looks by its color, things that happen with the wine as it's going up or down inside the glass, things like that. We'll focus just on the aroma first and keep it a little more simple. Classic Chardonnay fruits are things like melon, apples, and pears. Let's see if we get any of those here. Oh yeah, honeydew. There's definitely a little like a honey note here. And I'm getting pear, pear. but I'm also getting alcohol. Like yeah. you, you get the warmth of alcohol, even just in the nose, it's stinging in the back. Absolutely. Wine has typically more alcohol than beer, usually two to three times as much alcohol. It's a lot more prevalent, for sure. Interesting thing about the California style of Chardonnay, and it is true for the Bogle Vineyard Chardonnay, is that it's going to be heavily oaked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's the wine fermented in a stainless steel vessel, but after it fermented, they put it in a barrel. And so that, that when you sit in a barrel for a little while, a couple of years, or even just three to six months, you get a lot of qualities imparted into that wine. It gets a little more color, it darkens up a bit, it gets a little more tannin, which we'll talk about, and it gets flavors of vanilla, spice, spices like clove. Mm -hmm and it can impart a little bit of a richness too. So that's the one of two things very notable about California Chardonnays. The other one is that on top of being oaked, the winemaker adjusts the fermentation a little bit so that you get these more buttery, rich, creamy kind of notes to it. And very typical of California Chardonnay, we've got it right here, that oaky, buttery quality comes together. And sometimes you get it so much that it crowds out the rest of the fruit and the aromas and the flavors of the wine. And this one, it does sit a little more alongside it. So they're kind of in a better balance with each other. So we can smell that right away. And then when we go to taste, we should be able to get a little bit of that buttery richness, maybe a little bit of those pears. I think there's more pear than anything else. All right, so we just had that Chardonnay. And it's kind of a classic California big body, oaky, buttery wine. We're gonna move on to a Sauvignon Blanc by Giocato. And really, no one knows how to pronounce that, but it's coming out of Slovenia, which is right next to Northeastern Italy, and it's 2014. So, when we're talking to our tables and dealing with guests, there's a couple qualities in the wine that you just wanna hit. You don't need to talk about everything in its fermentation, and oftentimes you don't even need to go into like what it's aged in and stuff like that. You wanna focus on the fruit flavors, if there's anything else going on, which is usually grouped into a category called secondary aromas or notes, and the body size, and maybe make a point about acidity or tannins. So Sauvignon Blanc in particular is really well known for having a big, strong nose with tropical fruits and strong citrus notes like uh, lemon grapefruit in particular. Guava comes in there a lot, especially the New Zealand ones. It also has a lot of acidity to it, which makes it a really popular choice during the summer. So let's go and look at the nose. Right away, much different than the Californian. You a, lot, get, a lot of berry. Yeah, well, I'd say a lot of grapefruit in particular. I think there's a little bit of lemon on this too. Yeah. Minerality is a term for like wet rocks, to mm. put it very simply. And you get a little bit of that in the background with the lemon. So someone's like, how does the Sauvignon Blanc taste? Well, well, it's got a big nose and it's got some good grapefruit, lemon, aromas and flavors. And I know in advance it's got a lot of acidity, but when we taste it, Mm. You can feel it right in the back a little bit. And when you get familiar with tasting wine, you get familiar with that feeling of just the wine being cleaned out of your mouth when you swallow. And a lot of that has to do with acidity. So, when you're tasting wine, do you uh, do anything while you taste it? Do you, you want to make sure you, right away? you take a good couple seconds and you swish it around inside your mouth. You don't right. have to. In a formal tasting, you're going to be going through a lot of wines and you're going to be spitting it out as you go because it has more alcohol than beer and your palate will get fatigued and your senses will dull even after just a few you know gulps of tasting wine and judgment of course <laughs> judgment as well all right so let's move on all right
right, so we talked about that California Chardonnay, that oaky, buttery quality, big bodied wine. We then went into the Sauvignon Blanc, big nose, tropical aromas, lots of grapefruit and lemon. And now we're gonna go into red wine. We're gonna start off with a lighter bodied red Pinot Noir. This one is by Chris, is our producer. It is 2014, and it comes from Sicily. And Sicily is the island just by the tip of Italy, tip of the boot, so to speak. Classic Pinot Noir aromas from warmer climates like Sicily. You get a lot of cherry flavors right away, and that's usually the biggest one. And it'll go a little bit between red and dark, and generally when you're tasting red wine, the first distinction you wanna make is am I getting red fruit or am I getting dark fruit out of it? So when someone says, how is your Pinot Noir? It's nice to know, well is it red cherries or is it black cherries? Okay. You know, something to keep in mind. It's like raspberries or plum, yeah. something like that. So, of course the big distinction between red and white wine is that during fermentation, with white wine, the skins, the seeds, and the stems aren't involved. And when you do involve the skins, seeds, and stems, it darkens the color, makes it red, adds a lot more complex flavors and aromas, and adds tannin in particular. So, and tannin keeps coming up. Tannin keeps coming up, and we're about to we're about to bring them down. <laughs> so, right on the nose, I think you get ripe, fresh cherries. I think that's the first thing you get. Maybe there's a little bit of like a coffee note in the background. I don't background. know why. All I can get is vanilla. I don't know why. Yeah. I do get some vanilla. Could be. I've never, it's kind of unusual for Pinot Noir, but. Maybe it's all a little oak. That would give us some vanilla. Maybe. Maybe something in the soil. So, when you move to taste, a bigger body than that Sauvignon Blanc, you don't get that sense of acidity. You do start to get a little bit of that feel for tannin, which is something that's flavorless and tasteless. It's a natural preservative that's in all plant life, but it does give a little bit of like a subtle astringency or a little bit of a dryness in your mouth. Pinot Noir is a thin-skinned scra thin grape, so typically it doesn't have a lot of tannin, but as we move into reds, we'll start to see a little bit more on the Cabernet. It's not super sharp, but it is a little, yeah, it's definitely richer. Like, mm -hmm. you, yeah. Yeah, it's a fruitier one, for sure. Even on the palate, too, which is, which is, which is nice. So our last wine today is one of the more popular ones for sure. Cabernet Sauvignon. This one is by Buried Cane. It's coming out of Washington State. Looks like it's, what, 2014? Yep, 2014. Columbia Valley in Washington State in particular. It's a very well-known spot. So right away, before we even taste the Cabernet, we can start to know what we're going to get into. A bigger body red wine, some decent tannins. It's a thicker skinned grape and we're gonna probably run into some darker fruits. The classic Cabernet fruits are things like plums, blackberries, maybe a little like toffee notes and some better examples. Even, so, the, even the appearance is dark. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a thicker colored wine than the Pinot Noir. It's not as translucent, it's a little more opaque. You can get clues to what you're gonna get into before you even put your nose into the glass. So you start with some fruits, right? Let's see, red or dark? John, what are you thinking? Oh, dark for sure. Yeah, dark for sure. Little, Kevin? Little, yeah, a little bit of like black currant in there. Mm, yeah. yeah, good one. Darker fruits, let's taste. Mm. You can feel the tannins a little bit more, mm -hmm. for sure. Along the sides of your mouth. And like, like to me, like the best way I've, I've always ever been able to describe tannins, it's like, it's almost like kind of pulling in a sense pulling like moisture away but it's it gives a slickness I don't know is that is that yeah you're right on the the, the right track of mine for sure and it's not but it doesn't mean the wine's dry super dry no, either yeah you could have a, a sweet red wine that still has tannins to it yeah they're independent of each other none of the wines we've tasted today are, are sweet wines though. so this is enjoyable I, I really like, like this wine it's probably yeah. my favorite one of the bunch that we've had yeah yeah. today so Sweet. big body red tannins darker fruits you think a higher uh, tannic wine would pair well with a more fatty food or absolutely more like so a, tannin in particular you always have the classic like you give me my Cabernet Sauvignon with my steak and, and steak is a is a food that has a lot of protein and or a lot of fat depending on the kind of cuts that you're working with and tannins is what they do on your palate is they will work with the fat and protein molecules of what you're eating 
they'll bond and stick together and it'll help cleanse your palate as you oh, eat. Sure. So yeah. when you get a, a wine that has a good amount of tannin to a food with a good amount of fat and protein to it, they really work together. And there's a little bit of a synergistic effect where it makes the experience of that meal go up a little bit. It improves the overall experience. Classic parent. Yeah. So Cheers, bud. Yeah. Media legend. Is, uh, media, media legend. Media <laughs> 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 legend all day. Yeah. Cheers. Salute.